Hi folks and welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, making this video here to uh, provide an example here of calculating a voltage difference due to uh, the motion of a conductor in a magnetic field. So the problem we're looking at, imagine this metal bar here, right, which is of length L and is rotating about this axis at uh, an angular velocity omega. And in this region, imagine a uniform magnetic field everywhere, not just in the region that I've drawn, but everywhere in the screen here, uh, equal to, I put B sub O minus K direction. So the, where the B sub O is some constant. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to come up with an expression for the voltage difference we get um, across uh, the length of this bar. So first of all, so about why are we getting a voltage? So imagine maybe a positive charge carrier somewhere in this bar. And it never, it never matters whether you're looking at pluses or minuses. You just have to kind of keep, you know, you just have to be consistent. The velocity vector for that charged particle is down at the instant shown. And that velocity is equal to whatever this distance is, and I think I'll call that x, times the angular velocity. So now I have already started to define variables in this problem here. So we're going to call that distance x. Now, because we have a particle moving in a magnetic field, we're going to get a magnetic force on it. So let's draw a free body of that particle. And I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw a picture of it. Here's our particle, positively charged. And again, that's supposed to be this guy right here, one of the single positively charged particles in this metal bar. And if you apply the right-hand rule to this, putting your fingers in the direction of the velocity vector, rotate your hand until your palm is in, pointing in the same direction as these magnetic field vectors that should be right into the screen, if you're watching this on some sort of computer screen, your thumb should be pointing to the right. So the magnetic force on this particle is going to be, oops, to the right, I'm gonna put a force vector in. And that force vector, right, if we were to calculate it, that's equal to Q V cross B. And in this example, the Q is the charge of this particle. The V, I'm going to go ahead and put this, is equal to x times the angular velocity. Now, don't confuse this x here. I guess that was a poor choice in uh, variables here with that. That's a mathematical operation, cross. That's a cross product. This was meant to be a variable x in the problem. I'll just go ahead and leave it and move forward. So Q times x times the angular speed times the magnetic field times the sine of the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. And I look right here, the velocity vector is down. That's in the minus j direction in what I always call a standard xyz coordinate system. Or I sometimes call it a zatcha, xyz atcha. The magnetic field vector is in the minus k direction. Angle between them is 90, sine of 90 is 1. So, and again, I want to reiterate here that this is not a cross, this is an x. Maybe I'll put a, I'll just label it here. So Q times X times Omega times B. There's our magnetic force. Now, what that means in this problem is we're gonna get a charge shift, right? Um, negative particles are gonna shift left, positive charges are to the right. So basically we're gonna get something like, um, like this. Now, this one's going to be a little different than the last one because the magnetic force is actually varying with location. See how it's X dependent. So that force is going to be more to the right than it is to the left. So what that means is we're going to get a charge configuration that's going to be higher on the right hand side and that charge configuration is going to decrease as we move to the left. So I'll just kind of indicate it maybe something like this. Right now, we have more pluses on the right than we do left. In fact, we have some negative charge over here in some way, shape, or form. We now have electric field vectors that point to the left in this problem. Right, and again, that electric field is in the conductor itself. And what that's going to do is it's going to put a force vector on my positive charge. That force vector will point to the left. And that force vector is going to equal charge times electric field strength. Right, this is an equilibrium problem again because the instant this bar starts moving, this charge shifts, and and uh, again we're we're just these this particle is now in equilibrium, which means the net force is zero. The sum of all forces equals zero. I'll just do right positive. Right, <clears throat> that's going to give us this force, Q times x times omega times b minus 
q times e equals 0. All right, you'll notice that these are going to divide out. So the electric field strength in the bar, let's do this, omega times b and then times x, constant times position. Now, if I imagine moving a small distance uh, dx, maybe to the right, we're going to have a difference in potential. That's going to equal minus e times dx. And I'm now defining this as my x coordinate. The minus sign is because if I imagine moving a distance to the right, I'm going to be dropping in potential because I'm moving with the electric field. The total difference in potential we'll get by adding these all up. I'll just put the minus sign in front. With the limits I have chosen, I'm going to be starting at 0 and running to L. All right. So again, we'll bring all the constants out in front. Then the integral of x dx is going to be x squared over 2, evaluate 0 to L. And putting in the limits, uh, L squared up to, you know, L and then squaring it, minus, put it in 0, square it, we get 0. This is what we get for the potential difference between the right and left hand side of the bar. The minus sign is just because of the integration direction. Um, the important thing is knowing physically which side's at the higher potential. Uh, higher potential, I'll put this V max, is at the right hand side of that bar. And again, that's because of the electric field direction. So purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to calculate a voltage that's created by the motion of a conductor in an electric field. When you calculate potential difference, you know, it's basically um, an electric field times a small distance where this electric field vector needs to be in this di uh, direction of the variable, and it is. You typically drop uh, in potential anytime you integrate within the direction of the electric field. If you integrate against it, you would go up in potential. And it's typically draw a free body of a charged particle moving through the field, find an expression for the electric field, which I did here, uh, and then uh, integrate minus e dot dx or dr, depending on what you're using for a variable. And there's our uh, expression for the potential difference. I hope that this video helps. Have a great day.